Today we're drawing a combination of two words that are bound to produce a cool drawing. Mushroom with a head. Well, hello there, I'm Detroit. Let me preface this by saying that what I'm drawing is a mushroom with a head, not a mushroom head. I feel like the distinction is necessary. I picked this combination of words because a mushroom and a head are basically opposite as far as complexity of things go. Also, because if you put a head on anything that doesn't have a head, it makes it weird and unnerving, which is what I like to draw the most, I think. But yeah, complexity-wise, these two things are opposite. You can draw a mushroom in three lines and it will look pretty good. However, you can draw a head in three lines, but to make it look good, you need a lot more work. Proportions and all that stuff are involved. It is even worse when you draw a head at an angle like that. This head is coming out of the mushroom like it was embedded into it, so its orientation follows that of a mushroom cap. At first I didn't use any reference for it, I just started sketching away at a head, but I soon took a picture of myself at this angle on my phone just to look at all the elements in relation to each other, like the upturned nose that was definitely too low. In reality, the nose will appear almost between the eyes at this angle. The lips will also be bigger due to perspective and the outline of the jaw will also get slightly bigger instead of coming together. Just with the position of the upturned nose and the thin line defining the chin, you get the idea that this head has the right orientation. That is important here, because I want my line art to be minimalist. If a line isn't needed, I'm getting rid of it. I want a very colorful neon artwork with a crazy subject but rather simple in execution. I almost want to make the sort of art that, as you see it, you could think it has a deep meaning, when in reality it doesn't. I guess it's more like, if you want to give meaning to this art depiction, you can find a meaning pretty easily. This comes with the fact that the head is drowning in the mushroom and probably assimilated by it. The tentacles going into the nostrils, mouth and eyes, it's like a parasite has taken over the head. I don't know, I had a caption saying that it represents your brain on LSD, or you shouldn't look at your phone too long. You see what I mean? You can make it profound, like, now that's an image that makes you think. But actually, it's just a funny drawing. After the sketch, I'm inking the whole thing. I'm correcting all the previously mentioned mistakes, like the position of the nose. I'm spending quite a bit of time on this nose. You know, I draw a lot of things in a lot of different styles, but I'm not an expert on drawing faces, especially with minimalist line art like this. If I was allowed more lines here, the nose could have looked better, or if I could paint it to show the different planes of it, etc. But that's not the constraint here. I think going minimalistic is a really good constraint to put on yourself to understand what's important. Every single line counts, so the curve has to hit just right. You can't approximate it and get away with it. That's actually a lie. You wouldn't be able to get away with it if you were using just lines. Here, on the other hand, I know I'm going to color it. Even with the simple coloring, it allows more flexibility on the line art. Especially as you'll see, the head will be bluish. I think it's a trick for your brain. Basically, when you see the full drain, you'll unconsciously think, oh, that head is blue and so it isn't realistic. Because of that, all the rest that isn't physically accurate will get accepted more easily. I didn't plan on doing that, but I think that's what would happen, theoretically. The line art part is already over. It's very simple, so it didn't take too long, even if I needed to correct a lot of things. Now we can get to coloring. I'm not being too precious with the colors I chose, as long as they go well together. Blue and purple or pink always work together, for example. In this case, when you look at a color wheel, you can see that blue and orange are opposite. So I'm picking colors adjacent to both of these and they look nice together. You have one blue and a combination of red, orange and pink to contrast it. The purple in the background serves to tie both of them together. Again, here I'm not being too precious. The precise tone doesn't matter as long as it looks cool and neon. One thing I definitely want is to avoid areas with a flat color. Every shape I'm adding color to, I use two colors in the form of a gradient. A very important tip for when you use gradients is to change not only the color but the saturation and value a bit too. Value is less important here, but saturation is. You don't want your gradient to go from one color to the next with a similar saturation. It just makes it pop a bit more and makes the drawing more interesting. Another tip I could give you is to use gradient maps instead of linear gradients. That allows you to add more colors to a gradient rather than simply A to B. 
You can also have color A at the bottom, color B at the top and color C on the side instead of going for a succession of colors in a straight line. However, here I don't need it because I don't need to distinguish left from right since it's a pretty simple picture. Just for the sake of efficiency, instead of using a gradient map on top of my linear to blue purple gradient, I add another gradient with pink on the top and transparent under it. This way I still have three colors instead of two, but it's much simpler to do. I talked about the background a lot so far, but would you look at this? In the meantime, I've already colored most of the piece. I use the same trick everywhere anyway. To make the tentacles pop a bit more, I turn their tip red. My idea is that the face is blue because the mushroom tentacles have drained all the blood from the head. That explains the blue skin, the red tentacles, and the look of utter despair on the face. To contrast with the warmth of the color of everything mushroom here, the shadow on the face will use cold colors. Still with the minimalistic style in mind, I'm shading the face liberally, emphasizing the edges where the mushroom gets over it, and the huge bags under the eyelids, going full tired look. The shading is on a multiply layer with lower opacity and I use a clipping mask with different colors on it to make it look more interesting than a single color. For the line art, to make the ink softer, I'm using clipping masks and painting over the lines with the darker version of the color underneath. For example, the lines for the hair will be dark blue and the lines for the mushroom will be dark red. That is all of my coloring principles. The rest is a bunch of soft coloring to make everything pop without going full render. That's a bluish glow on the bottom of the mushroom because light reflects off the water. Similarly, a red glow on the floating bits. Even if it's minimalist, I'm allowing soft glow effects if they make the picture less flat and you don't actively see them. It's like passive rendering, stuff you don't know is present, but without it, the picture would be lacking and looking a bit bland. Honestly, going as minimalistic as possible, especially for the line art, it's a great exercise. It's the whole concept of putting a constraint on yourself so you have to problem solve in a way you wouldn't necessarily do otherwise. The vibe of this drawing is something I couldn't have achieved if I had not done that. I believe with any other art style I wouldn't have been able to convey the same impression. I could have made it more unnerving or more funny but not this here feeling. No two artworks are the same and I surely intend to explore as much as I can. Did you enjoy this little picture? Even if it's simplistic in a sense, it did take quite a bit of work, and I hope you managed to learn a thing or two thanks to it. Like the video if you did, and leave a comment telling me what you want to see me draw next. Any prompt is fine, and any art style is too. Subscribe to see me draw it in the future, and check the description for all my social media links. I'm Detroit, and I'll see you every Thursday and Sunday until I die probably. Bye!